Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 20. Continuing on with our classic championship series with Kevin Schwantz right at the helm. And it's going to be round four right here in Mugello. So taking a look at our starting grid, Kevin Schwantz on pole position, Wayne Gardner, Arbe, Rainey, Crivier and Valentino Rossi, Kaczynski, Roberts Jr, Lawson, Dewan, Biagi and McCoy. And finally at the back of the grid, Jeremy McWilliams. Round four of the World Championship is here and we are ready to start. Waiting for the lights to go out, Schwantz on pole position, and away we go! Starting from the front row, starting from pole position, you can't possibly start a Grand Prix from a better position, but what a start for Gardner. Crivier had a brilliant jump off the line, Rossi's up there as well, John kaczynski has gone down somehow, didn't actually see what happened to him, but our rival is up there in first place, that is Wayne Rainey, beat him last time out in Donington Park, we'd love to do one over him on the American again today as, oh my goodness, Gardner with a bit of a lunge up on the inside of Schwantz, we'll be trying to get him back sooner, rather late to contact made there, a little bit eager going into Poggio Secco, bit of a mistake on my part as we go round the outside of Abe, is that possible, sliding the rear on this Suzuki, up on the inside, a little bit of contact perhaps with Abe, oh, a bit of a nudge pushes him off wide, but both men are still on board the respectable motorcycles, as Kevin Schwantz is now into third position. We have seen Kevin Schwantz more often than not in the podium position, so it's great to see he's still up there yet again. Rainey in the lead with an eager Crivier who's pursuing him pretty quickly, actually. Rainey looked like he got a good start, potentially the whole shot, and then got away. But Crivier is not letting him get away, and that is what we need. We do not want Wayne Rainey to get away in this Grand Prix. He tried it last time in Donington, and of course that did not come to fruition for the American. And instead it came to fruition for this American here, i.e. Kevin Schwantz. Did really, really well in Donington Park to chase down Rainey and then give him the good old pass. So it's very eager to see how things get on. Tensions flared a little bit between the two Americans. But we'll see how things transpire as we get closer and closer to the men in first place and second place. A little bit wide there going into the corner of Biondetti 2. Not ideal, but uh, it is what it is for the time being. We're going to Puccini, exiting in a moment's time. I did struggle to try and find the line here. Playing a lot of Ride 4 means the bike is a lot heavier, so you can pull in a little bit earlier and the bike will gradually glide around. But MotoGP 20, the bikes react a lot quicker compared to Ride 4. And we do have the graphics on the left-hand side for a change. Sometimes it never works and it just doesn't come up, but I'm pleased to see it is there today. So Rainey, Crivier, Schwantz, Arbe, Lawson and Rossi are your current top six as things stand at the end of lap one. So Crivier is right on the rear tail of Wayne Rainey now. I don't know whether he's going to be close enough to make a move up on the inside towards turn four for Marta Rossi. We'll see as we get closer and closer, but I don't think he's going to be. It's just a matter of time. It looks like he could be close enough to, for a potential move up into uh, Casanova and Savelli, my favourite combination of tracks and corners on any particular track, to be honest with you. I do love this combination, it's so good. We're not going to be able to get close enough to Crivier or Rainey for this matter, because of course Rainey is a good couple of bike lengths ahead of the man on the Repsol Honda. Arabiata 1, navigated pretty nicely so far. Gain enough speed for Arabiata 2. Get into the slipstream for, Scar for Scarperia, we could potentially make a move, but we aren't close enough as it stands. We're going to be continuing to move forward as Alex Crivier makes his first attempt to the Grand Prix lead. Can he go around the outside of Rainey? I've completely messed that one up by watching the Grand Prix unfold ahead of us. So that is a bit of a mistake on Schwantz's part. But Wayne Rainey has lost the lead. It is now Alex Crivier into the first position. I'm not sure how long he's going to hold on to P1 as the, uh, the lap will transpire. Going into Biondetti 1. Fling it right for Biondetti 2. Much better that time. We didn't cut the corner and we didn't exceed track limits on the exit. Wayne Rainey a little bit slow on his exits as we'll try and go around the man on board the Yamaha. A little bit wide is ideal here because then you can get the better drive. Got to go up at the inside of Rainey if we can. Get in the slipstream, get as much speed as possible. I don't want to be using too much power, don't want to be using too much fuel. So I'll leave everything as it is. Use the double slipstream here. Into the slipstream of Wayne Rainey. And then into the slipstream of Alex Crivier. Carrying a lot of speed. 190 miles an hour. Breaking into San Donato for the third time. Vasquez, the championship lead is down! Kevin Schwantz is down! I do not believe it! There must have been some sort of collision there with Wayne Rainey. And our championship leader is in the gravel. Absolute chaos. Carnage has unfolded here in Mugello. Oh my goodness. The championship has been well and truly blown open now, ladies and gentlemen. Something gone off there between Wayne Rainey and Kevin Schwantz. That is unacceptable. 
there's definitely a bit of argy-bargy between these two men. And, and in, oh my goodness, this rivalry has been well and truly ignited in fuego now, ladies and gentlemen. What can Schwantz do as he's back on the motorcycle? He's got Max Biagi in his sight. And as you can see in the distance, is Valentino Rossi. So he's not miles away from at least sixth or fifth place, possibly. But what damage has that done to Schwantz? The damage is not on, I don't believe it. It's on light. It doesn't seem we've had any damages of yet. But that is massive for the championship. It did look like Wayne Rainey give us a bit of a shove into the corner. We don't approve of that one. Absolutely not. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of that moment there. Do you reckon Wayne Rainey should be penalised for that one? Or is that simply a racing error? Really, really crazy stuff there, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely crazy. I'm sure that Race Direction will be looking into this. But I don't know. That was... It's a tough one. He, he was up on the inside. Looked like Schwantz had the inside line as he goes around the outside of Max Biagi. Biagi will be disappointed to see that this man on the Suzuki just crashed just a uh, couple of moments ago. And the Kenny Roberts Jr. is also having a good look behind him. And he's like, is that is that really Kevin Schwantz? <laughs> oh my goodness. Crivier still leads this Grand Prix. Rainey in second. Arbe third. Lawson fourth. McCoy, Rossi, Gardner, Roberts, Kevin Schwantz and Max Biagi is your top ten for the time being. Schwantz carrying a lot of speed going into turn one. Try and defend better this time so we do not get bumped into the side. And as you can see there, Roberts quite easily letting the American get through. That was just complete carnage. I was not expecting that, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologise for screaming down your ear. But this race has well and truly really kicked off something impressive here. This is, this is going to be one hell of a comeback if we can come back and get ahead of perhaps even Rossi or maybe into fifth place ahead of uh, Mick Doohan. But for the time being... Eddie Lawson has now just got ahead of Wayne Rainey. It looks like Rainey's going to get back as we go into my favourite part of the track here. Casanova and Savelli, beautifully executed. Schwantz now takes seventh place away from Gardner. Lawson and Rainey are still battling out for that podium position. Hopefully Lawson can slow Rainey down. He's going to get close to Valentino Rossi here. We did make contact with him in Donington, but there was literally no malice. As we go up on the inside of the Valentino Rossi, the young Rossi there. We're ready to flick it left here for Pelagio. And I'll tell you what, that crash has well and truly lit a fire beneath this Suzuki. Kevin Schwantz is more determined than ever to chase down the front runners. It's certainly not going to be a podium here today, but you've just got to give it your best shot and see if we can at least take fifth place. I think a fifth place finish will be okay, but there's some certainly, certainly stern-looking figures in the Suzuki garage right now. There'll be some very miffed associates inside that garage, I'm telling you. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of miffed fans as well. I mean, I'm not impressed with that move either. It did look like Schwantz had the inside line, but let's not dwell about it anymore. Let's continue to do what we do best, and that is race with our head down, focusing on this Grand Prix. Rainey is no longer in the podium position. I'll take that as karma, ladies and gentlemen. Gary McCoy in our sights next as Rossi is falling off the pace a little bit as he just lost touch with Wayne Gardner. So exiting San Donato for the fifth time of asking. There is only eight laps in this Grand Prix, so there's not much else to be done. But I could do see the rides ahead of us. It's they're not that far away. So we'll see how things get on. We have plenty of fuel left for this Grand Prix. Just a quick mention, if you haven't subscribed already, now would be a great time to do so. I'd be very, very grateful. We just did hit 900 subscribers just a couple of days ago, so I'm extremely grateful for that. But I am now on the hunt for a 1,000, so I would be grateful if you could just help me out and hit that subscribe button, and even a little like if you enjoyed the video. Get ready to flick it left here for Savelli. Using every bit of the tyre there, and a bit of the outside track as well. It looks like we're closing in on the guys in front. We do see Rainy in the, in the distance there. He's just exiting Arabiata 2 now. And 1.6 seconds... Separate Schwantz and Gary McCoy. A little bit wide there again. We do have that three-tenths of a second penalty. I won't be surprised to see that increase if we continue to abuse the track limits there. But uh, I'm trying to catch up as quickly as possible. Of course, we're doing our best with the search circumstances we have, unfortunately. Oh, but Mar Gary McCoy is right on the rear tyre of Wayne Rainey now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this could be absolute karma if McCoy can get ahead of Rainey and we can also take up maybe a couple of extra positions to the victor goes the spoil so we'll see how things go on but I am very keen as McCoy is now past Rainey Rainey might have a little bit of a problem here perhaps his tyres have burnt or he's just had too much contact with Schwantz early into turn one we'll soon find out in a moment's time if we get close enough that is it's Crivier Arbe Lawson is your podium finish currently as it stands 
McCoy, Rainey, Schwantz, and Schwantz is closing. It's a 149.355, that's a great lap from Kevin. He's going to get closer and closer, he's going to San Donato. Turn one, for lap six of eight. Rainey's right in front of us. Maybe this one's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. If we can stick it ahead of the other American, tensions are well and truly going to go. I'm loving this championship series so far, and things have just got really heated. I'm absolutely loving it. It's been a while since we've been able to shout at the microphone, and I'm pleased to be doing it here. As we are closing in on Rainey now. Please let me get him in Casanova and Savelli. Oh, he has a good look behind him. He knows Schwantz is coming. He's going to be absolutely livid to see Schwantz there again. He might think we've been done with him as we go around the outside of Rainey. Contact made there. Careful. Don't want to be battling too much and lose the front again. More contact made there. Bloody hell, contact again. Contact more. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what have you done, Schwantz? Oh, my God. This Grand Prix has just gone heck to a handbasket as Wayne Rainey now ends his Grand Prix in the gravel. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. What can we do about this Grand Prix now? Is Kevin Schwantz going to get black flagged for that mover? Oh, my goodness. What is going on here? Oh, comment section, please. Help me out on this one. <laughs> I was not expecting it to go towards that. I was trying to get ahead of him and he just wasn't letting me through. There's definitely tensions flaring here. There's just going to be absolute animosity between the two Americans now. I don't know if there's going to be any apologising after this one, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't hold your breath. As, oh my goodness. What a ridiculous, ridiculous sequence there. As Kenny Roberts Jr. It does set the fast lap of this Grand Prix. A 148.735. As things calm down a little bit. I'm not calm. I'm still at the edge of my seat here because there's a podium to be had here. Eddie Lawson, McCoy aren't even that far ahead. If we can somehow pull... Oh my goodness. We crashed in this Grand Prix. We crashed. And then we then we collided with Rain Rainey again. And he ended up in the gravel. Didn't even. He's not even going to be able to complete this Grand Prix. And now we could still even get on the podium. He's got around the outside of Lawson on the Kajiva. Get into Casanova, flick it left for Savelli. Beautifully executed. And we'll try and chase down Gary McCoy now. What has happened today? This, wow, brilliant race so far. I'm absolutely speechless. It's been difficult to commentate on this one with all so much stuff going on. Gary McCoy is in well and truly in our sight now as we enter Scarperia. Breaking hard on the right-hand side of the tyre. Get ready to flick it left here for Pelagio. And you know what? Even second place could be on offer. Crivier is well and truly done in the distance. He is already booking the next Grand Prix. He's happy to be where he is right now, and he's going to win this Grand Prix with relative ease. Biagi and Duan are doing battle towards the back of the grid there in 10th and 9th place, respectively, continuing to battle it out. There's a four tenths behind Gary McCoy, but I think you can wipe that slate clear in a minute. Doesn't matter what the grid, what the gap was to the, uh, the rider in front, because it's gone. Schwartz is ahead, temporarily ahead, but by this point, I think Schwanz has got the much better tyre life, and I think he's going to escape here. In the neck and neck, two men abreast. Two men abreast here, going over the timing line. Any moment now. Crivier, Arbe, McCoy, Schwanz. Schwanz is through, he's now up to third place. Arbe is going to have to defend pretty well on this final lap. Otherwise, Kevin Schwanz is going to take second. And ladies and gentlemen, if we manage to take second on this one, I'm going to put this down as one of the best races I've had in MotoGP 20. Arbe struggling to keep the front end of that bike down. We are getting better and better and better at this game as it goes on. I cannot wait for MotoGP 21. I cannot wait to continue this series. I'm already ahead of Arbe. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much more else to say. I'll tell you. Matarasi, Borgo San Lorenzo, Schwanz up into second place. I do think a win could have been on offer here today if uh, Rainey hadn't have taken us out or we crashed with Rainey. It's wrong to point the finger yet. I'm keen, keen to see what the race directors want to say in the comment section down below let me know what you think let me know if anyone should be punished for the time being it looks like Schwantz has done it he could definitely be holding on to a second place trophy here right here in this magnificent track in Tuscany Mugello wonderful track I think I made a comment the other day about me being a bit Mugelloed out I am on ride 4 because the AI is just pants here is a little bit different in MotoGP it's a fantastic track the riders are very competitive. 
a little bit aggressive, it seems. <laughs> but it's quite all right as we exit Corintia for the final time. Currently to flick it left for Biondetti 1, and again for right for Biondetti 2. Six seconds behind Alex Crivier, but that really doesn't matter anymore. Because we are closing in to a second place finish. I am thrilled to bits with that second place. Crivier is going to take five points away from us. Rain is going to lose a whopping ton of points in this championship battle. And you know what? I'm mostly happy about that because he deserves it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it. Another victory for Alex Crivier this season and a second place for Kevin Schwann. So quick confirmation on your screens there. Schwann's in second place at the fast lap of the Grand Prix at 148.768. McCoy finishes off the podium, but the winner today is Alex Crivier. Big loser, Wayne Rainey. Championship positions are Kevin Schwantz increases championship lead. He is uh, up by 15 points now above Alex Crivier as Wayne Rainey drops to 23 points behind. Not good for the fellow American. So that concludes another MotoGP Classic Championship race. I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I have. Like, comment and subscribe if you did. Hit the notification bell if you haven't done already. It's the best place to be alerted to every single dot race upload. And upon that note guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.